everyone, it's Meredith with Soul Navigation, your evolutionary astrologer, and I am so happy to be with you here today. It's January 22nd today, 2021. I'm in a somber mood. I've just lost um, a love of my life. My family has just suffered a really serious and devastating loss, um, the death of a loved one in my family. And it's interesting because this is where I was sitting exactly one year ago today. If you go look at my videos for this day one year ago, I also suffered the loss of a, a soul who was a, like a daughter of mine. I've been sitting in the transit where Pluto is squaring my moon. Astrology doesn't lie. It works. It tells the story of your life and yet it still stays unbearable. I'm in a heartbreak and in a somber mood. And so I just didn't have it in my heart to talk about something lighthearted. So I thought that I would continue my series on the planets. I've already done an in love series where I looked at your Mars. I started a Venus series, but today I'm going to talk about Saturn and uh, the great lessons that Saturn brings to you. So I'm going to riff on Saturn today and I'm going to talk about it in your chart. And if you are a super supporter, I want to say I love you. And I love my conversations with you and I love my time with you. And I'm going to continue the Saturn conversation um, in a private video for my members only over there where we're going to talk about Saturn and um, we're going to go into the depth of it in the chart a little bit more in your own chart. So pull out your chart if you can, so you can know where Saturn is in your own chart. So when I talk about it, you can really learn. Saturn is absolutely imperative and critical to understand in astrology. And I'm going to just tell you right now, I'm not going to do it justice. I'm just not. I would need 12 hours to be able to talk about the depth and the breadth and the meaning of Saturn. I don't have this scripted. I don't have this written down. I'm sharing this from my heart and my mind and my soul to you. But Saturn is complex and it's here to teach us many, many things. Liz Green has a phenomenal book on Saturn, which I recommend you reading. But I'm going to share with you enough to get you to at least understand it and be able to see it in your own chart and to be able to help you peel the layers of meaning that Saturn play in your chart. And it is important to know what house Saturn's in, what sign Saturn's in, and also what aspects Saturn makes to your other planets, especially your inner planets. So is Saturn in happy aspect or challenge aspect to your sun, to your moon, to Mercury, to Mars, and to Venus? That's really important. Um, and so leave me a comment below and let me know where is Saturn in your chart? What house is it in? And then if you are a super supporter, I'm going to talk to you about if Saturn is in challenge aspect to the sun or harmonious aspect to the sun, what does it mean? And to the moon and to Mercury, Venus and Mars. And so that's going to be kind of a thrilling video. So if you're not a super supporter, it's not too late to join, to sign up, and then you get to see all my secret behind the scenes videos. So join our group. It's such a gorgeous group of people, by the way. So let's dive in to Saturn. First, I want to tell you a few things that Saturn means. So when I look at a chart, I go straight to Saturn to see what you're afraid of. Then I go and I look at what sign it is in and what house it is in to understand the storyline of those fears. The conversation that we're going to have over in my private members video is I'm going to talk about how those fears manifest when they are in challenge aspect or when they are in harmonious aspect in your chart. So if they're in positive aspect to your son, um, the fears are still there. They're just going to manifest in a way that um, perhaps 
debilitate you at first, but you overcome them and they create strength. We'll talk about that piece of the conversation in my members only super supporters um, group. So let's talk about what Saturn is. It's going to show me where you're inhibited. It's going to show me where you have karma to burn. That means karmic lessons from a past life. By the way, I am an evolutionary astrologer and I use Placidus. I, I use the Placidus chart system. I'm not a Vedic astrologer and an evolutionary astrologer. If you don't know from my other videos, and if you don't even know me, I really encourage you to get to know me in my other videos and get to know my work and, um, the, the, the depth of my, of my work, but what an evolutionary astrologer is, is somebody who believes in your past life and uh, reincarnation. So I do see the chart as a story over multiple lifetimes. I can see your past life, where you came from, uh, what gifts you entered this world with, what fears you entered this world with Saturn, who you were or who you are supposed to become in this lifetime and who you are preparing to be in your next lifetime. Now, Saturn's going to tell me the story of your karmic past and what lessons you brought into this lifetime to conquer. It's going to show me your weaknesses and where you're inhibited, where you're shy to express yourself fully, where you have limits, where you have self-sabotaging tendencies or just plain old sabotaging tendencies. It's going to show me where you lack confidence where you are oppressed, where you are suppressed, where you are repressed, where you grow slowly. Wherever you have Saturn, you will not be fast. You will take your time. You will go slow and you will get to visit your lessons over and over and over on this subject matter. This is where you will at times feel broken, lost, depressed, sad. This is where you will be asked to concretize your fears. So if your fear is around money, if you have Saturn in the second house or lack, you will be encouraged in this lifetime to go out and build confidence and prove to yourself in the material world your Saturn issues. So you will probably struggle with cold, hard cash. Now, when we face our Saturn, we can have great tenacity and resilience and even courage, but it comes to us slowly and it is revealed one stone at a time. I want to give you a metaphor right here. Saturn and the house and sign that it sits in is where you personally will build your Egyptian pyramid stone by stone. If you are impatient and this video is already going too slowly for you, you are not in your Saturn. If you are holding on to my every word, letting it sink in, visualizing and thinking about where you experience loss, where you are restricted, where you feel wounded, you are in your Saturn. Let me keep going because Saturn means a lot more than just this. Saturn is the part of yourself that is governed by rules and by regulations. Saturn in your chart will show where you are restricted and bound up and where you have placed gargantuan rules. This is where you will find yourself obedient. Now, look at the relationship of Saturn to Uranus to see whether you follow those rules or you break those rules and how you follow them and how you break them. And in my super supporter members only video, I'm going to talk about Saturn in relationship to the other planets. So if you can't relate totally to what I'm saying, when I get to your house and sign placement, if you will, it probably means that you have a dominant 
planetary placement with your Saturn. For example, it probably means that your Saturn is maybe conjunct Uranus or your Saturn is square Uranus or something like that. The thing that I really want you to know is for me, and this is me personally, and a lot of astrologers look at the sun as being your father figure. I look to Saturn. It just doesn't let me down. And the charts that I see show me Saturn as the authority figure in your life. Now, if you were born and you didn't have a father, then this could be your mother if she was the authority in your life, if you come from a single female household. But let's say you're a child, you grow up with a mother as your authority figure, but at 18 years old, you, you join the military. This Saturn could be the military. This Saturn is what governs you. This Saturn could be Jesus Christ. This Saturn could be Muhammad or Allah in your life if they govern you and if they are the primary authority to you. So I'm going to call it father, but what I really mean is who's your boss? Saturn is the boss of you. And Saturn is also what you fear or what you feared when you were young. It can also be what you fear when you are older, but it is the authority or the thing that you are a little bit afraid of, intimidated by, scared of. And it is what you are eventually supposed to overcome. You have to overcome your Saturn and it's scary, like real scary. So if you don't know what your Saturn is or what it means, I want you to think of what are you really afraid of? Because that's your Saturn story. That's your Saturn story. If you have a debilitated Saturn in your chart, like an uncomfortable Saturn, you probably had a bit of an uncomfortable relationship with authority or father in your, fig- in, in, <laughs> in your life. If you have Saturn on the sun, by the way, conjunctions are both good and bad because they can be overwhelmingly large and they can be tremendously supportive and tremendously debilitating when they conjunct. So let's go through the house placements of your Saturn. Okay, I'm not going to talk about the sign in which Saturn is in, although I do want you to tell me what sign do you have Saturn in? Now, you can only know the house that Saturn is in if you know your birth time. And that's what I want to talk about because I think the house placement of Saturn is so personal and so massively significant. For example, every single person born in 1966 has their Saturn in Pisces, but everybody who has their Saturn in Pisces has it somewhere different in their chart. And that's where I find the punch, the pow, the wow, the biggest individualized differences. Saturn in Pisces, or right now, we have Saturn in Aquarius. It just moved into Aquarius. So all these babies born for the next two years are gonna have that. And so it makes it a little bit less consequential. But where Saturn is in your chart and what house it is in will show me the arena, the playground, the sandbox in which your Saturn is expressing itself. So we're going to talk about the houses of Saturn. So what house? Go look in your chart right now. And if you have one of my charts, I love my glorious, gorgeous, gorgeous charts. Um, because I have the cheat sheet, the key, you can read it in the boxes to the left and in the, you can scroll down all the way until you find Saturn and then scroll over on, on the charts that I made for you. If you haven't bought one, you can go to my website right now, soulnavigation.com and go buy one of my charts. I make them so, so easy to read. You don't even need to read the circle. You can just read the little cheat sheet boxes and go down to Saturn and see what house it is in and then follow along until I get to your house. But hold on, stick with this whole entire video because I'm going to tell you the meanings of the different houses. And even if you don't have Saturn in one of those houses, you'll still get to learn a lot about each house. So for example, I'm going to start with the first house and I'm going to tell you what it means to have Saturn in the first house. But if you have the sun or the moon there, you can learn a lot 
about that first house and you can learn a lot about what it means to have any planet there. But this is specifically about Saturn. You should start learning about what all the different houses mean. By the way, these are my meanings and this is my experience after being a professional astrologer for over 23 years. So you, you're not going to find this necessarily in a book, but this is what I have come to really understand about Saturn. The first thing is if you have Saturn in the first house, it doesn't matter what sign you have it in. Um, of course, the sign is going to create a different hue or a different color. If you have it in Aquarius, it works very differently than if you have it in Taurus. But I'm going to tell you about the themes that you are going to experience no matter what sign you have it in if you have it in the first house. Saturn in the first house is extraordinarily obvious. This is a person who is going to be buttoned up. This is a person who is going to have a karmic contract with the concept of authority and they are going to become the authority or have to become the authority in their own life, probably because the authority in their life, they will have a severance from, or they will need to break away from father. So father, Saturn in the first house is larger than life. Normally he is dominant. And, and if this isn't father, this is authority. So this could be the military. This could be your grandfather. This could be your mother. This is whoever the freaking boss of you was growing up. And in your childhood, you probably had, um, and I'm just going to use the word father, you know, but you guys interpret it, you know, modern day in 2021, father shows up a thousand different ways. Um, in my child's life, I am the father. So I, you know, I'm sensitive about it, but just so I don't keep repeating myself, you guys get it, right? So this authority, this father figure is very dominant in the first house. Saturn in the first house is so obvious because this person has sort of um, a melancholy, a stoic, and a reserve about the way they look. They also have a look about themselves that is, um, they probably feel that they are not the most beautiful person in the world. They probably have a little bit of uh, self-doubt and intimidation around the way they look for some reason. Now, that isn't necessarily accurate, and that's not necessarily the truth, but that probably is their truth. Very few Saturn rising people or Saturn in the first house people feel just gorgeous. They also have their um, personality kind of buttoned up. They feel a little bit limited and they get a slower start in life. They're slow and methodical moving through life. They are pragmatic and uh, they believe in the concrete, tangible world. If they can touch it, they'll believe it. And so they need a lot of proof in the world. They're not airy, fairy, imaginative, you know, checked out people. Oftentimes, Saturn people, people with Saturn in the first house had had to grow up fast. They may have lost their father, lost their authority, lost their parental guidance in life early, and they had to become their own parent, um, which is kind of cool later in life, but in the early part of life, it is very painful. So they had a sort of early suffering in life and hopefully what they learned was their own inner power and their own inner strength. These people have massive, massive gargantuan, gargantuan strength inside of their bodies. They have a courage about themselves, but they don't show it. They are stoic, kind of like, you know, James Bond, if you will. And they can look scorpionic. They're very serious. They're unmoved and they are not mushy at first. You have to peel away those Saturnian layers to get down to the mush. I will guarantee you one thing. These people had to overcome hardship. 
hardship in the early part of their life. Uh, definitely before the age of 36, but most likely before the age of 14. And if you are a Saturn in the first house, please, 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 I beg you, leave a comment and leave your story below so other people can learn from you. It helps when I'm not just telling this, but when you confirm this to be true. And if you don't know about a hardship that you suffered in your life, go ask one of your parents or your siblings, did I struggle before the age of 14 or before the age of seven? And I pretty much guarantee you that you, you, you did. Also, these people are sort of the Benjamin Button syndrome, where they start out this ancient wise soul, right? And by the time they're 80 years old, they are so super playful. They've learned finally how to have joy and boundless, unlimited euphoria and happiness and glee in their life. But the whole first part of their life was serious business, working hard, taking on the leadership. You know, they are literally the, the Egyptian slaves building the pyramid with the carrying the stones on their back. Literally, the people with Saturn in the first house have the, the stones on their back and heave ho, whoo, laying it down. Yeah, they're not the designer in the back going, oh, I would like the stone over there. Or it'd be really nice if we put a window in the pyramid over here, right? I didn't get to visit the Egyptian pyramids. Has Have any of you? You guys leave me a comment below if you have and tell me what was it like and where is Saturn in your chart? I saw the Mayan ruins and oh my God, they were so amazing. I love the Mayans. I love the Aztecs um, down in Mexico. I mean, the ruins just blew my mind. They actually made me cry. And I fell in love with the Mayans after I saw the, uh, the temples, the Mayan ruins and temples that they built. And they were just such brilliant people. That is Saturnian. When you have Saturn in the first, there's something inside of you. Your karmic contract is around facing your fears of being your own authority, of being authority in the world, being perceived as large and in charge. These people usually shirk at that at first. And then there's something in their life that propels them into being a solid, stable leader. And they concretize their leadership, meaning they put their leadership into the concrete world. This is a pretty badass placement for it, but it hurts because it is the body and the self and the face and the approach to life. And they have been overwhelmed or dominated early by people trying to be the boss of them that they took the beta position, but their karmic contract is to take the alpha position. So are you an alpha yet with Saturn in the first? That's what you're afraid of and that's what you have to overcome. Okay, so every placement with Saturn is challenging and difficult and painful and hard. It just is until you master it. And here's the thing about Saturn. Saturn is the God of time. It rules time and Saturn takes a very long time. Just like Rome wasn't built in a day, neither were the Egyptian pyramids, neither were the Mayan pyramids. And so Saturn is Kronos and it takes a long time to master it. Just like a 20-year-old can be wise for their years, but a 20-year-old is no, nowhere as wise as a self-actualized 80-year-old. They just aren't. Now, if the 80-year-old is not self-actualized, they probably are. But what I'm saying is, is time does pay off. And this is where you're going to have your slowest growth. OK, so this video that I'm doing right now is a get honest with yourself video where I'm asking you to look at your wound, look at where you lose, look at where your early losses have come from, look at where you are inhibited, look at where you are restrained, look at where you won't let loose, look at where you over control, where you try to be the boss but don't feel like the boss, look at where you've been boss. Look at the Achilles heel, and that's your Saturn story. So if you have it in the second house, this is all about money, self-esteem, and self-confidence and self-worth. You might have experienced a lack around money. Your father may have won big and lost big. You may have grown up rich but poor, or you may have grown up poor 
and then poor. There is not necessarily a truth around this, just like the Saturn in the first, but there is hardship and pain around income or money or generating enough. There is a, there is a tape inside of you from your previous lifetime that says you are not good enough. If you don't have the money, you're not good enough. If you don't have the resources, you're not good enough. If you can't put a roof over the head, you may be in a place where you have to take care of your father, take care of your family, take care of your mother. You may be in a place where you are going to be the financial boss and you don't feel you have the ability, the mental smarts, the self-confidence to do that. Tell me if you have a second house Saturn and what your relationship to money is. You could hoard money. You could feel so tightly trapped by money that you're all buttoned up and you become a workaholic just trying to earn enough money. You could be cheap, kind of, you know, not generous. Very few Saturn in the seconds are, are generous with money unless they inherited a gargantuan amount of money. And then if they are, they always kind of put conditions on it. Like you can use this inheritance, but it has to go to college and medical. You know, they want a payment plan back because they don't, they Saturn is where you can't be frivolous. Saturn is where you are going to put rules and conditions because ultimately you have to be in control. Saturn is also around food. So a lot of people with Saturn in the second have eating disorders where they limit their food intake, where they're afraid of eating donuts, you know, dipped in syrup or peanut butter bacon sandwiches. Oh my God, I ate those in my childhood. I also ate like full quarts of ice cream and I worked at Baskin Robbins and ate a pint of ice cream every night. I would never do that today, but I don't have Saturn in the second, but Saturn in the second would have fear around food. So if you have Saturn in the second, let me know. Saturn in the third is your voice and it's communication and it's using your voice in an authoritarian way. So while Saturn in the third is literally about the voice, literally about the voice and how I sound, the Saturn in the third house person feels like their voice isn't good enough or their voice shouldn't be used or they were shut up or they were told they were dumb. It is also about education and learning and they may not have done well in school or school felt too conventional, too restrictive. Maybe they were taught by nuns who put, you know, put a ruler on, on them or they were in um, a school that promoted like be tested and get A's or maybe they had parents or some sort of authority figure that just commanded or demanded that they do school in a certain way when they wanted or they could have thrived in a different way. There's some debilitation around speech or a speech impediment or learning or being restless, you know, in a classroom with too many restrictions, feeling bottled up around learning, or they were just told that they were flat out not smart enough. And so they shut that down. They shut down the ability to communicate, talk, learn. And the less lesson here is to understand that we all learn differently and that you are quite intelligent. And if you discipline yourself a little bit and you concretize the concept of learning, so you pick up a book or you pick up a medium in which you can master around learning and you start to overcome those inhibitions around feeling like you're not smart enough or you're not capable enough, or maybe you're dyslexic. Tell me, tell me if you have Saturn in the third, how did this manifest for you? Did you hate school? Was school too conventional and too restrictive for you? Tell me how this manifested because you've got to overcome this and you have to be willing to break through that to prove to yourself that you can learn and you are smart enough. Just get disciplined in your own unique way to learn the way you want to. And the people who told you that you weren't smart enough, good enough, your voice wasn't good enough. We didn't, you know, the, the old fashioned baby boomer saying where it's like children are meant to be seen, not heard. That's Saturn in the third. By the way, I got to take a quick time out here. Have you guys noticed my new t-shirts? Oh, this is my new t-shirts and um, it's the new soul navigation line. And these are real Zwarovski crystals. And we have all 12 signs plus a soul navigation t-shirt. And we are going to launch our new t-shirt line. They are so cute. They're a woman's cut. So they fit with a snug and a curve and they are buttery soft. The quality is unbelievable. This is not just a regular t-shirt, but I'm so proud of them. My designer, she um, owns a company named Hazel Moon and she designs her own um, clothing line. I asked her to 
make me design me a t-shirt so we did this together we picked out a neutral color and these are her little jogger pants they are so stinking cute and this is my little outfit i wore this with heels today i'm just showing you so cute these are not my heels though these are my socks but this is my little soul navigation shirt and you guys are going to be able to buy yours um i'm wearing it tucked in but tucked out, it's so cute. It's a little bit longer and it has a slit up the back and a little fishtail like a mermaid. They're so cute. They're gonna get on my uh, store at soulnavigation.com, hopefully before Mercury goes retrograde on January 30th. So I'm hoping to load these by January 29th and you guys can buy yours. Um, they're so affordable, but the thing is they're so comfortable. Sherry told me she slept in hers. And I don't blame her because the quality of this shirt, like the fabric that she found is just unbelievable. If you guys know the company called Soma, they make the best night shirts. And um, the cotton is like a bamboo cotton. I don't know what this cotton is, but this is like butter soft, butter soft. And what I like about this, I'm gonna wear, I'm gonna wear each one for the next 12 videos is you can just wear it, you know, I like that it's kind of high. You can just wear it like this and no big deal. Or you can show it, you can wear it to yoga. Yeah, I think it's cute. I love the Sag. We placed all the crystals together. We had so much fun designing these. Anyways, this is my new t-shirt line, Soul Navigation t-shirt line designed by Hazel Moon. Go check out all her clothes. They're incredible. Okay, let's talk about Saturn in the fourth. This is a biggie. Okay, so this is about family, and this is about being very responsible inside your family. This is about having family obligations or feeling stifled or restricted by your own family. You may feel a fear of homelessness. You may have experienced having to live in your car or live in a tent or be homeless. Your parents might have been homeless, or there might have been a threat when you were little that you were going to lose your house or your parents couldn't afford your house, or your house was embarrassing to you or limited you in some way. Maybe you lived in the rich neighborhood, but you lived in a, in a poor house in a rich neighborhood, right? There was something that there could have been shame or limitation in, in, in your home life. There's a karmic contract here where your family was probably miners or farmers. They probably mined coal mines, um, diamond mines, something like that or farmers that had to work for the land that they lived on. There could have been entrapment or e even in, in enslavement. So you could come from a lineage of slavery. I would love to know if you have Saturn in the fourth house, uh, were your ancestors slaves? Were they trapped in their home story? What is the heritage that you inherited, the legacy and the lineage through the DNA that you inherited, a belief system that shaped you around your, your home could be taken? You know, was there a fire to your home? Do you live where there's tornadoes? Do you live where they're in Miami where, you know, there's hurricanes? Do you, do you live in the world somewhere where your, your house could be invaded or stolen from you? Or have you been bankrupt and you've had to foreclose on your own home before do you fear that you can't pay the rent or the mortgage have you been evicted this is a fear of lack around the home and also this can be where a mother or father are divorced a divorced home so something about your home especially when you were younger uh your your home felt limited it felt there was a sadness attached to it and so you're here to overcome that and know and learn that you are safe and you might feel a little bit restricted like i bought this one home i, I have to stay in this home until i pay this home off and i don't dare leave this home or move out of this home i live in the neighborhood that i grew up in or i return to the home that I grew up in to, to buy it from my own parents or something like that. Like there's lineage and heritage attached to this. And the karmic lesson is to truly become secure inside of your own self, to feel sort of an unbridled joy around your home and to fill your home up with joy. So this is, this is absolutely critical. This can also mean that your mother is your father. So if you have a fourth house Saturn, tell everybody, comment, and let us know because it helps us so much to understand the personal and the depth of the stories by the placements. Okay, it's something that I'm going to say that a lot of astrologers don't say, and I have found that there are some really good videos on the concept of Saturn, but I haven't found a video that personalized Saturn this deeply 
for you. I haven't, I haven't found a video that really talks about the melancholy of Saturn, like I'm explaining it to you. And when Saturn's in the fifth house, it seriously breaks my heart. Um, it, it, it breaks my heart at anywhere that it is. If Saturn didn't break your heart, then you're out of touch and you're not in reality because Saturn is a heartbreak. Um, and we all have it somewhere, but when Saturn's in the fifth, the reason why it's especially painful for me to think about, I don't have this placement, but it is especially painful to think about. And by the way, when I do do my readings with my clients and I've done God over 150,000 readings, I step into the shoes of my client. And so I try these aspects and these planets on, and I can truly merge with them so deeply that I can feel them, even if they're not my own placements. And I don't interpret through my own lens. I literally sit in a person's chart and I become it. And I feel what it feels like. And if you have Saturn in the fifth, I just, I ache for you because this is the house of joy. And so joy has been stolen from you. I mean, I ache if it's in the fourth. I ache if you were called dominance in the third. I ache if you fear money and food. I ache if you fear your own leadership and self-confidence in the first. It All of it hurts, right? And, and we go on around the zodiac. But in the fifth, it is especially painful because this is the house of spontaneous joy. This is the gambler. And so this is a person who does not allow themselves to create. So this is the buried artist. This is like the artist who was buried alive, not letting their art become uncorked. Is this you? So this is the great Mozart that didn't get to play the piano or the harpsichord. This is the great artist who never got to use a paintbrush or the singer who didn't find the microphone or the actor who auditioned and didn't get the part and never tried again. This is the person who got the living joy sucked out of them. This is also a person who like lo has lost hopefulness around romance and none of it's true. None of it's true. The whole point of Saturn is to literally be the punter on the football team and drop kick it and kick it out and overcome it and not believe this BS that Saturn's telling you. You can be the artist, you can be the singer, you can have the romance, you can have the hot sex, you can have the joy. You have to be willing to unzip yourself and step into the joy, the childlike glee and joy and happiness and say, screw it, I'm doing it, right? Don't hold back. You audition for the play, you try out for American Idol and you go on that date and prove yourself wrong and lose the cynicism around joy. Like jump into your art, create, concretize. If you don't speak English as a first language, because oh God, I have so many people around the world. And by the way, I love you. I mean, Bulgaria to, to God, Guatemala to... Um, China to Canada, Australia, Mexico, Puerto Rico, Portugal. I've done readings everywhere, even Ireland, the UK, all over, Denmark, Norway. Oh my God, I love you guys. Ireland, um, Saudi Arabia. I have a great client in Saudi Arabia and the Emirates. Anyways, it goes on and on and on and on. So if you don't know what I mean by concretize, it comes from concrete to materialize learn that word. And if you have Saturn in the fifth, I want you to concretize your creativity. You create something into the real concrete world, like blow glass, blow glass, make pottery, paint something, write a book, sing a song, put it into form. Okay. Let's talk about the sixth house. This placement is the house of hard work. This is the house of like servitude. This could be that your father was a workaholic or your father or your authority figure really taught you to be responsible. And you either take responsibility to like such an extreme level that you become a slave to it. This can also, this is also the house of health and fitness. So you can be a hypochondriac. You can be very fearful of not being well. And so you can become a workout fanatic. You can also uh, feel like 
tremendously responsible for small animals. You can feel an attachment, especially to like reptiles or people, uh, people, animals with like tough skin. So like turtles or snakes or anything with a hard shell, like a crustacean, if you will, um, crabs or something. I know it sounds funny, but it's a tough, like a tough skin um, or an animal or you might also become kind of paranoid around illness or health and wellness. So you could have like a well-stocked vitamin cabinet, or you can feel like, oh my God, I have to work out. I have to work out. I have to work out. You might become addicted to what you believe self-mastery is. But the hardest part about this is that you probably had an authority figure or a father figure that was unavailable to you or chose work over you, which can erode the self-esteem. And so these people get involved in a trap that says, if I'm not responsible, if I don't work hard enough, I'm not worth anything. And so they take their job and their daily responsibilities to a heightened degree, so much so that they can miss out on life. And they end up really only bonding with animals and their workout regimen. So their gym and their animals become their lovers. And if you can relate to this, let me know. This is a hard placement because these people can actually work so hard or become so paranoid about uh, becoming ill that they become ill and they have a weakened immune system because they just live in a sort of an OCD paranoia around I'm responsible, I have to produce, I have to be the authority, I have to, you right, I have to bear responsibility for my family, for my work, I can't let my workmates down, I can't let right? Like I can't take vacation. These people rarely take vacation. Tell me if you have a sixth house Saturn. And if you take vacation a lot, tell me if you have a sixth house Saturn and you have no job. Also, this can show up where these people are really afraid to become a leader and they stay a servant in their life. This is the house of servitude. And this is also the house of perfection. So they're on a perfectionistic OCD mania right? Like, oh my God, I chase perfection. I got to be perfect. Got to be thin. Got to be beautiful. Got to have, right. They can just drive themselves into a serious flat out migraine and they can feel like they get trapped or stuck into a job, which has a roof or a cap on it. And they, they don't go beyond that. So they keep themselves subconsciously or consciously trapped in a subservient role. Maybe this is a woman who's married to a very powerful man who feels like I just need to not work and I need to just stay at home. And then they never carve out the gifts that they know that they have inside of themselves. And they wake up one day going, Oh, who am I? I never really did much beyond uh, this limiting job in my life. And it might not even be a housewife because there's many of many, many housewives that have very fulfilling lives. But what I'm just saying is, is this can be a person who can sacrifice their own talents in order to be in a subservient role to their authority. And they never self develop, which is ironic because this is the house of self development, but with Saturn there, then you sometimes never self develop. And I pray to God, you are not doing that. The seventh house is really interesting when you have Saturn here, because you probably have a partner in your life that is going to dominate you. If you have Saturn in the seventh house, you probably are going to marry a person who is going to be the boss of you. It doesn't matter if you're a woman or a man, you are probably going to be bossed and dominated, oppressed and suppressed by your marriage partner, or you're going to marry somebody who is your authority in some way, shape, or form. So they're either older than you, uh, you're looking for a parent, uh, you marry a parent, you marry someone who thinks they're a parent of you, or you marry somebody who oppresses you, represses you, or suppresses you. You marry someone who puts a cork in you and says, don't express, I'm the boss, we're doing it my way. And so you defer your relationship to this other person. And then one day you wake up and you go, what the hell did I do? Oh my God, I'm so much better than this. Plus you have to realize that if you have Saturn in the seventh, it is opposing your rising sign. So it's opposing you. 
So this is uh, easy for you to fall into this trap where you don't realize this at the time. So if you do have Saturn in the seventh, I want you to be really careful. And I want you to be involved in relationships that are egalitarian relationships where it's even Steven and these people are not calling all the shots and you're being obedient to it. This is also a person who feels like relationships stifle them or they have to compromise too much or they have to give too much. This is also a person who really wants a relationship very badly and they want a contractual relationship, whether it's a business relationship or a marriage. They don't want a free for all, you know, because they don't have a lot of trust. Right. They want it in contractual writing like, you know, like, you know, pinky swear and blood brothers, blood sisters, where we, we put this in writing. You know, um, because they just aren't going to loosey goosey this. This is where you're controlled. Saturn is where you try to control. And in time, and when they get older, they will become the authority in the relationship. Hopefully, are you a seventh house Saturn? Tell me how that has worked out for you. By the way, I just have to tell you that we are running a special. There's a couple specials going on right now and you can win a free reading at Soul Navigation. All you have to do, we're giving away a free mini love reading on Valentine's Day just because I love you. And it's going to be a free mini love reading. All you have to do is come over to my Instagram page. It's soul underscore navigation. And on Valentine's Day at 10 a.m. I'm going to announce the winner. All you have to do is be a super supporter. All you have to do is like and subscribe to my page and write in the comments, I want to win. And then your name is going to go into the hat and I'm going to draw it on Valentine's Day. 2021 at 10 a.m. on my Instagram live. So come join me over there. I do lots of lives. So if you haven't followed me yet on Instagram, you should just come over there and you could win a mini love reading from somebody from Team Soul Navigation. If you haven't checked out my team, the team is amazing. I have six readers other than myself. Go check them out. We're also offering $29 readings through all the way through February 2021. And many uh, love readings for just $29. Just check them out, soulnavigation.com. You'll love them. They are amazingly talented and gifted. Okay, let's move on to the eighth house. Okay, Saturn in the eighth house um, can also be an extraordinarily sad placement. I will tell you that I feel when Saturn's in the fourth, the eighth, or the twelfth, it can feel actually unbearable unbearable. So Saturn in the eighth is a fear of intimacy. It's a fear of really going all the way with a person. And when I say going all the way, I do mean sex. I do mean like a fear around sexual expression, a fear around the enjoyment of sex. Um, but I also mean the, the going all the way, like completely bearing my soul to you. And it can feel like that depth of the merge is a drowning feeling. Uh, they can feel completely overwhelmed at doing, doing daily life with another person, but because it requires a, a depth of connection that is chronic and constant, and they just can't breathe. This is the house of feeling like I'm drowning. It can be very, very painful, and there can be extraordinary, extraordinarily sad losses around father, either father is vacant, absent, or died, or divorced, uh, the, the mother, um, there's an alienation and a sadness around dad. This is the sewage system house. And so this person can feel like they weren't worthy of love, that they are um, there's a deep self-loathing with Saturn here at times, especially around father. So father could have been absent or didn't pay attention to them or in some way, shape or form, this person, maybe even from a past life, really feared the level of, of intimacy that life and partnership, the very thing they crave, asks of them. And so they have to be with a partner that is truly available to their shortcomings around sexual expression and around intimacy so their partner goes slow enough to bring them in and peel away their fears and inhibitions. This is also somebody who may have suffered 
deep pain around an inheritance not getting enough money or being the executor of the estate and the family being mad at them for the way they divvied up the money. But other people's finances may have betrayed them in some way, shape or form. And the goal here is, is to be involved with people that you can trust to bear your body and your soul with. And this is no easy thing. Okay, with the ninth house, this is where somebody had a very strict belief system or a strict belief system was thrust upon them in a way that stifled their own self-expression, joy, and abundance. This is somebody who lost faith. Interestingly enough, the whole point of their early childhood was to have faith. And so the faith and the way in which their scripture was taught to them is something ultimately that they will probably reject and deny or something that became too stifling and too controlled. This is somebody maybe who uh, gets stuck in arranged marriage or somebody who uh, was raised Jewish, breaks away from the Jewish tradition and marries a Catholic or vice versa. You use any religion, any religious combination that you want. Somebody who's Catholic that discovers later in life, hey, this isn't for me and break, breaks away and becomes a gypsy. Um, this is somebody whose religious upbringing feels too strict, too tight, too restrictive, or they pretend their religion like, yeah, I'm a Christian. I'm, you know, I believe in Jesus and I'm a Christian and I don't believe in premarital sex. And then they have a bunch of premarital sex. So there's contradictions around their belief system, their philosophy in which they were raised or taught that they want to secretly rebel against. This is also somebody who, uh, uh, an, an education in life may come a little later. So they might get their college degree or they might get their master's degree when they're in their thirties rather than in their twenties. So they don't do the conventional college route um, or they, they take college when they are m much older college classes or master's or PhD or something. Definitely higher education here is, is a theme, but it could come a little later in life. And uh, this could also be somebody who turns into a very religious figure, like a, like a preacher teacher type person. This can also be somebody who does law and order or was raised in a house of law and order. You know, my father was a cop and beat me with a belt or something crazy like that. I just say that like they took the law into their own hands um, and became too strict with their child if you're the child. Or if you have it here, you could be too strict with your own child. And so really look at where are you dogmatic? Where are you like my way or the highway? Where are you like you will not marry a person who doesn't look like us or believe like us or have, right? something like that. That's the shadow side. Now with this placement later in life, when you, when you work through the problems around faith, law and order and religion and education, uh, wow, you can become so scholarly and you can become like a true, true authority in theology or philosophy or psychology or astrology. You can become a true guru uh, when you break through the restrictions that were placed upon you in your younger years. Leave me a comment below and let me know if you have this placement and tell others. I want to hear about if you have Saturn in the ninth. Okay, can I have a favorite placement for this hardest planet? <laughs> that would be the 10th house. And I say this, um, my daughter has this placement. And so I see this placement play out on a daily basis. Okay, I'm not saying that this is easy because there is no Saturnian placement that is easy. And if you are in touch with your wounds, your limitations, your Achilles heel, where you self-sabotage or where the world just totally, totally rips you off, that's your Saturn. So when you get ripped off in the 10th house, is it fun? No, but it does happen to be, if I could pick my favorite placement for the worst thing. <laughs> <laughs> if you have stayed with me, thank you for laughing around the irony, like <laughs> my favorite placement for the worst possible thing. Um, this is your house of career. This is your legacy. This is also the house of father. And this is the, this is the highest point in the chart. 
But let me tell you what this does do. This makes an extraordinarily responsible human being around work. And by the way, there is no luck with work. There are no like, oh, let me let me uh, get you an interview with you know the president of the company, and you could just like squeeze right it. No, you earn your own stripes. Like in the sixth house, no deals are done. No, you earn what you are worth. So people with Saturn in the 10th, make sure they're worth something. They work hard at zero years old to put like merit bucks in the bank and they perfect their craft. They perfect their talents in a slow, slow and methodical way. They are usually not the first to be chosen. They are usually overlooked and rejected and rejected and rejected. They try and, you know, job, job offer and, and for or job interview interview. No, no, thank you. We'll pick the person who is less qualified than you. Uh, like I'll just do a little side note. My, my daughter auditioned to, um, to be in the, uh, student body, um, in, I think it was eighth grade. And honestly, she, she, uh, tried out for like the community dir- director, com- community service director. And I'm just, being honest with you, I know I'm her mom, but like there wouldn't be a better soul than her. And she didn't get chosen. And uh, I just felt bad because she's been doing food drives for the homeless since she was four and she would have been fantastic. Nope. They didn't pick her. That's part of the karma. That's part of the story. Uh, She also uh, tried out to be the mayor of her class in third grade and she didn't get picked um, because she said boys only boys only vote for boys. And so they all voted for this boy. Anyways, that's part of her story. That's part of Saturn in the 10th playing out. And that makes her more resilient. And that, and when she gets rejected like that, it's going to either make her crumble or try harder. Saturn in the 10th can also mean one of two things. It can mean that your parent or your authority failed in their own career. And then you became responsible and you had to rise up and become the authority figure um, to sort of take care of, or pick up the pieces of the demise around your parent's career. Or you have a parent that is so larger than life that the standards are so high. You feel like you can never be that. You feel like you can't live up to that. So you can really have a father figure or an authority figure that is larger than life or that has created Beethoven's house, right? You guys are with me, right? You know what I mean when I say Beethoven's house because you've watched my other videos. And if you haven't, please go watch my other videos because I give you the depth of my soul in these videos where I just don't do cookbook or sun sign astrology. So this is the house of like legacy, like Beethoven left a legacy. And so if Beethoven is your father, do you want to play the piano? Uh, maybe I'll be a baker, right? Not positive. I really want to play the piano if my dad is Beethoven. Yeah. So you can have a complex and you can feel like I'm not good enough and the standards are too high and I don't dare try. And so you can limit yourself around trying. And when you limit yourself around trying, you don't know what you want to be because you certainly can't live up to whatever it is they're doing. So you sometimes end up picking nothing and you self-sabotage. The thing is, is find your craft like the pyramid, build it stone by stone by stone. You will find your own way and you will become a master at your craft. If you just try, tell me if you have this placement, how did it play out? How did you overcome it? Have you overcome it? You might not even know what your craft is until later in life because you were intimidated to even try. Okay, with Saturn in the 11th, I feel like sometimes people are not allowed to dream or their dreams and hopes and wishes were either stifled or they were like um, the authorities in their life, their father didn't believe in their dreams, didn't believe in their quirkiness and told them that they weren't allowed to have a unique self-expression. They weren't allowed to be different or unique and their friend groups might've been too whacked out for their family or too different or too 
oddball. And so they either over conventionalize their life, over traditionalize their life, or they get they get rebellious and they completely gravitate towards the 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 wild side of life, disregarding what they're. Uh, upbringing was, um, but usually they stifle their uniqueness and they also feel like they don't fit in or they're like severely alienated from their friend group or organizations. Like I don't fit in, you know, which one is not like the others, Saturn in the 11th, Saturn in the 11th is not going to be like the conformist and the, let me, let me say that differently. They're going to feel so alienated that maybe they, they force being conventional on their own selves. So they just want to fit into that cookie cutter because being odd or being weird or being different is so painful, or they just can't help themselves from being odd, different, weird. And, and, and then they don't fit in and then they hate the groups and they hate the friend groups and the organization. And then they're loners. And they, they don't want to have friends because they're too odd. So being odd or being unique or being different or being rebellious or being weird is stifling. It's painful. It's hurt. And it causes, it causes massive depression because they just don't feel like they fit into the collective. Like I just don't fit in anywhere. I'm not in the nerd group. I'm not in the science group. I'm not in the sorority group. I'm not in the, you know, I'm not in the African group. I'm not in the Mexican group. I'm not in the Norwegian group. I'm not in any group. I just don't belong in any group. And so I just am totally isolated and totally alone. And if that goes to the total dark side, you become the Unabomber living in the, you know, in the little um, shed shack in the forest with your revolvers and you plot against society and you create a great revolution. (laughs) Okay. Maybe that's exaggerated, but you know what I'm saying? Where you're just like, I don't fit in. So you might only have online friends. You might only live sort of in a fantasy world around friendships. You might have a gamer lifestyle where your best friends are on the internet and they live in China and you never met them. Or you just might feel so overwhelmingly alone because people don't get you. You might literally feel not gotten And there's a depression that can sink into that and a loneliness. And so this is, you need to master friendships and sort of force yourself to be with those who can accept you and your uniqueness and your differences and feel like who cares, right? Okay. Saturn in the 12th is a little bit of an enigma. Um, these people have such a severe sense of isolation and they may even feel at times they have a mental illness and they might, or they might not, but they might fear having a mental illness. They might fear being hospitalized or institutionalized or fear going completely under or completely losing control. So like if you have to have, I don't know, your wisdom teeth pulled and you have to be completely sedated, these people may have a a very severe, severe reaction to being um, isolated, or there may be deep claustrophobia, if you will. There's a fear to lose control here. There's a fear around the boundless energy in the world. And there is a fear around um, merging with chaos. These people need serious alone time. They need to be able to manage chaos Um, and they probably had father missing, or maybe father was a drug addict an alcoholic, or just not available, institutionalized, hospitalized, or had a slow ailment that kept father from them. Also, father may have played psychological guilt trips on them. Father could be an enigma and misunderstood, vacant, away, lots of secrets, hard to understand, hard to physically touch. So maybe they lived on the other side of the world. Father might not have been um, a concrete material concept in their life, but more of uh, somebody in their energy, but not necessarily um, at the dinner table. In time, one of the ways that this can manifest is this person can feel the suffering of all souls on the planet and they can feel a sense of responsibility for all those who suffer. And these people make really, really good authority figures with 
death, dying, sorrow, suffering, loss, psychologists. I mean, this would be a brilliant um, psychologist or somebody who worked in hospice or somebody who helped rescue animals, somebody who became an authority figure in time after the age of 36, especially for those who feel alone or alienated or those who suffer, um, somebody who wants to help in the material world literally make people well again. So, for example, um, when my beloved dog before Teddy uh, was on the last days of her life, her name was Aphrodite. She was a Rhodesian Ridgeback. Does anybody have a Rhodesian? I love them. Anyways, I wanted her to have the most comfortable death in the world. And I think this is a perfect Saturn, 12th house Saturn job. And I called a mobile vet because she she was uh, too heavy for me to carry. I couldn't put her in my car. And she came to my home and uh, she euthanized my dog, but in the most beautiful of ways, she gave her a little cocktail that made her fall asleep. And then she died in my arms and it was awful. It was so awful. That is the perfect epitome of Saturn in the 12th house. So caring for the suffering of people, of the, of me and the dog, right? Of all things, and then making it more comfortable to face the fears around being totally, totally alone. And there's nothing more alone than her like leaving this earth plane, right? And so Saturn in the 12th can have a blessing when the person becomes helpful to the very thing they fear, isolation and loneliness and pain and psychological sufferings. This can be a person who has completely lost faith faith in the world and needs to be of service in a way to the underdog, the 12th house, in order to help the world heal. So to become an authority in the healing of the world through love and compassion is their way out. Do you relate to this? I hope you do. I hope you like the Saturn video. I know it was a little bit hard it's a hard subject. When you really try on your Saturn, it can make you cry. Tell me where your Saturn is. How has it affected you? How old are you? And how have you dealt with it? Saturn is going to get easier when you self-actualize. That means when you do a lot of self-discovery, that's why I want you to kind of binge watch every video I have. I have more than a hundred videos now, but just start binge watching with your chart. If you don't have your chart, go to soulnavigation.com for $10, buy it because you can figure it all out. You can read it all and start binge watching and peel the onion back into the core of who were you born to be? Who were you in your last lifetime that has shaped you in this lifetime? And who are you preparing to be in your next lifetime? I don't know. Plow the fields of self-discovery. It's so fascinating. And in this channel, it'll answer so many of your questions. If you invest in you, methodically invest in the self-development of you so you can self-actualize, so you can master your Saturn. Right now, the question is, has Saturn gotten you or have you gotten Saturn? Have you mastered your Saturn yet? Or are you in the process of it? Or has it completely defeated you? I can help you. Come over to soulnavigation.com and get a reading with either me in a couple of months or one of my other readers who are sensational right now. Take good care. From my home to yours, I wish you the very best. I hope you're staying healthy and happy and madly, passionately in love with your life. Bye for now.